Hey everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be this Northern Lights Tumbler. The tumbler that you see has no vinyl on it. The tumbler has spray paint and glitter only. All of the materials that I will be using in this video will be listed in my description below. I also will be adding my help videos in my description below. So now let's go ahead and get started with this video. I'm starting out with a 30 ounce Ozark Trail from Walmart. I sanded this tumbler and then I wiped it down with 91% alcohol. After I wiped it down with 91% alcohol, I then spray painted this with a matte or a flat black spray paint. Once I spray painted this, I went ahead and I let it dry uh, for about 30 to 35 minutes. And then uh, now I am going to mix my epoxy. I'm going to be adding uh, my glitters with the epoxy method, which is why I will be mixing my epoxy. I will be uh, letting you know all of the names of the glitters that I'll be using. They are all from Glitter Heart Company, and I do have a coupon code listed in my description below for GlitterHeartCompany.com. You are wanting to apply a very, very small amount of epoxy to your tumbler because you want your epoxy to act as an adhesive. You don't want to add a lot. So the way that I like to think of it is if I went to spray this tumbler with a spray adhesive, that's the thickness of how I want my epoxy to be on my tumbler. You want it very, very thin. I will be using a little under two milliliters of epoxy for this 30 ounce tumbler. It is hard to mix only two milliliters of epoxy. So what I typically do, if I have a lot of orders, I'll go ahead and I'll epoxy or work on some tumbler orders. And I usually have some epoxy left over. So after I'm finished with my orders, uh, my extra epoxy, that's when I use it on um, my glitter uh, tumbler or tumblers like these. I will be mixing my epoxy off camera. And for all of my beginners who want to know how to mix epoxy correctly, I will be posting my help videos in my description below. I have my epoxy right here mixed. I have about five milliliters of epoxy left over from my previous tumblers but I'm only probably going to use 10, or excuse me, two milliliters. Like I said, you want the epoxy to be thin, you want it to act as an adhesive. So this is going to take some time to really thin this out. The way that I do it, instead of pouring, I take my glove finger, my glove hand, and I dip it into the epoxy cup, and then I just spread it on with my finger. So I'm going to fast forward this part and then we will return. my epoxy on my tumbler. Again, I use a very, very small amount. I use about two milliliters, a little less than two milliliters. Make sure you take your time with this. Make sure you apply it very, very thin. If you saw, I actually turned off my turner and then I just manually spend it or turned it uh, just to make it easier for me because the turner was going too fast. Whichever way you want to do it or however way works better for you or best for you, go ahead and do it that way. I'm now going to apply my glitter to my tumbler. And if you see, I, add, I added my catch paper underneath my uh, tumbler because there are going to be a lot of uh, glitter falling off the tumbler. I am just going to make a custom mix. So I'm just going to let all of the glitter fall onto the paper and then just put it in one container when I'm finished. If you do want to turn off your turner for this step, you may. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Turning off your cup turner will not affect this design at all. Remember, your epoxy should be as thin as adhesive. So if you turn off your cup turner and you see your epoxy running down the, the cup, you have added too much epoxy to your tumbler. My first color is going to be Milky Way. And it's kind of a um, color shifting from blue to green to purple. So I thought this would look really, really cool. Uh, this would look nice on the Northern Lights tumbler. I'm going to take 
my um, glitter and I do put it inside of my Dixie cup just to allow me to not dump it all over because I am very heavy handed. And if you know, um, I'm sure a lot of y'all do, Northern Lights, they have kind of rays. So we're just going to add it like so. And you see just small rays. You can make them as long as you want, as thick as you want. This is your tumbler. It's Northern Lights. There's no rhyme or reason on how um, uh, nature or Northern Lights uh, look. So what I did was I just applied it onto the turner, onto the tumbler. And then if you saw, I blew off the excess glitter and it kind of went on my paper here and some of it didn't go on my paper. But so that's what you want to do. You want to make sure whenever you're done adding the uh, glitter, you want to blow it off. And if you don't want to blow it, um, so much just with your mouth, you can go ahead and use a straw and blow it with a straw. So now I'm going to move on to my pink. I just want to show you the different colors first and then I'll add more. The pink is cherry blossom. And then I'm just going to turn on my turner and then I'm just going to put it wherever it wants to fall. You see how the turner goes a little faster for this. So if you do want to turn off your turner and do this, if you find a spot like so, and then apply it to your tumbler, just so you're not overthinking or uh, trying to, uh, to chase the, the tumbler. So now I'm going to let it move over, spin, and I'm just going to blow it. That one turned out a little messy, but it's all right. I'm going to take my blue, which is glass slipper, and I'm just going to make another streak right next to it and it's gonna turn out nicely here. So if you don't wanna blow it, all you can do, if you don't wanna blow on your tumbler, you can just let it spin over and then all your glitter will fall off there. So however you wanna do this is up to you. I wanna kinda show you different ways to apply this and make it your own. Um, and then you can choose however way you would like to apply. So again, just turn on your turner and just let it fall. And then it will go on that catch paper. My next color is going to be Key Lime Pie. This is going to be a green. I'm going to apply this right here. There's no rhyme or reason on how I'm doing this. I'm just randomly applying this glitter onto this tumbler. And then now I'm going to let my turner spin and then you can just let it fall off or you can blow the excess glitter off of the tumbler. And then we'll let it come back around and then you'll see that beautiful green popping with that black. My last color is going to be Sleepy Hollow. It's a holographic purple. I really, really like this color. This is going to go nicely with the black. And so I'm just going to place it randomly again on the tumbler. And if you notice, I'm just hand turning my tumbler because again, I applied a very little amount of epoxy onto my tumbler. So you see that purple, I wanted it against that green because I really like these two colors together. You see that purple on that black, it really, really pops. And then I can just let my glitter fall right off. So those are the colors that I'll be using today on my tumbler. You can use any colors you like, whatever works best for you, whatever you like best. Have fun with this uh, and just really make it your own. It's gonna turn out gorgeous either way. For the Northern Lights, uh, we will be applying that stencil at the bottom towards the top. So do keep that in mind. You don't have to glitter your entire tumbler. Um, you can go ahead and stop um, about halfway down the smaller section of your tumbler. Don't waste your glitter and glitter the entire tumbler because we're gonna end up covering up the bottom at the end. I'm going to now apply more glitter to my tumbler and I'm just applying it randomly around the tumbler. There's no rhyme or reason. You don't have to make rays. You can just put spots like I'm doing. It is Northern Lights. Whatever works for you and whichever color you want to pop more, then that is okay. So if you want more green, you can have the green pop more. If you want more purple, make this tumbler your own tumbler.
I have finished applying my glitter to my tumbler. For me personally, I like a Northern Lights tumbler to be covered with glitter. Um, I want it to be fully covered. As you, as you can see, if you wanted more glitter or more colors, go ahead and add whichever colors you like, uh, different shades, or if you wanted less glitter and more of the black peeking through, go ahead and add less glitter. Make this tumbler yours. I'm going to let my tumbler spin on the turner for about three hours. Then I'm going to turn off my cup turner and let it dry for another hour or so. Again, you want this to be a very, very thin uh, epoxy. So me turning off my cup turner in about three hours, it's not going to let the epoxy run. It's just going to air cure. Uh, so after about four hours, I'm going to come back and then we'll move on to the next step. Hey guys, I am back with my tumbler. It's been spinning for about three to four hours. So all of this epoxy on the bottom underneath the glitter is completely dry. You will have glitter on top and you will be able to rub it off. That's what you want. So for the next step, I am wanting to seal this glitter, meaning adding another layer of epoxy over the glitter. I mix my epoxy off screen. I mixed a total of 15 milliliters of epoxy. That's 7.5 part A and 7.5 part B, totaling 15 milliliters of epoxy for this 30 ounce tumbler. I have turned on my cup turner and I'm now going to put my epoxy on my tumbler and I will be focusing on the glittered areas, meaning up top, if I don't have enough epoxy to epoxy the bottom or it's a little thinner at the bottom, that is okay. I want most of the epoxy to be on the glitter because we're wanting to lock in that glitter to that tumbler. So all I'm doing is I'm pouring it on my tumbler and I'm spreading the, the epoxy down the tumbler along with the design. Again, this is your own version of your tumbler. And this is a Northern Lights tumbler. It's hard to mess up. There's no specific design for your tumbler. So I'm not worried about some of the purple glitters getting into the blues or the, or the pinks getting into the greens. If the colors mix on this tumbler, it will not bother me at all. So don't worry about any of your glitter colors mixing together or possibly overlapping one another. I am mostly focused on spreading the glitter or spreading the epoxy over the glitter and sealing the glitter into place. My 15 milliliters of epoxy was just enough for my tumbler and it covers the entire tumbler perfectly. If you are heavy handed or if you do like a thicker amount of epoxy on your tumbler, go ahead and mix more and you may put 20 to 25 milliliters of epoxy. Do keep in mind, you will be adding at least one more layer of epoxy after this which is why I like to only mix 15 milliliters and I really like to spread my epoxy thin on my tumbler. The reason for this epoxy on this step is just to lock the glitter on the tumbler. It's not to have an even coat. It's not to uh, make the, the glitter pop. It's just to seal the glitter onto the tumbler. So whenever we move on to the next step, the glitter will be stuck to the tumbler and it will stay in place. It's okay if your epoxy is very thin and you see your glitter bumpy. That is all right because again, we will be adding another coat of epoxy at the end and your glitter will not shine. It will not peek through or you will not be able to feel your glitter through your epoxy once you add that final coat of epoxy. After you've added your epoxy to your tumbler, you're now going to let your tumbler spin for about six hours. Once your tumbler has spun for six hours, you will then turn off your cup turner and letting your tumbler dry or air cure for another 18 hours. So you're wanting your tumbler to be cured or completely dried for 24 hours before you move on to the next step. 
The reason why we need a 24 hour drying window or a curing window is because I will be placing vinyl on this tumbler. If I place vinyl on this tumbler while the epoxy is not cured, the epoxy might come up with it. So I want my, my tumbler to be completely dry, to be completely cured. So when I go to remove my stencil or my vinyl, the epoxy will stay in place and it will not mess up your tumbler. So I'm going to let this spin and air cure for 24 hours and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, y'all, I am back with my tumbler. I have let it dry or air cure for a total of 24 hours. Remember, you want this to be air dried or air cured for 24 hours because I'm going to be placing a stencil on here or a vinyl. And whenever I go to rip up my vinyl or remove my vinyl, I want to have the epoxy stay to the tumbler. If you do this after six hours or 10 hours after you epoxy this and you put the stencil on, whenever you remove the stencil, it's most likely going to remove this epoxy and it's gonna mess up the entire tumbler. So be patient with this part. Make sure you do have this drying for at least 24 hours. Make sure this is cured for 24 hours. And like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna see some bumps. You're gonna see your glitter through uh, the epoxy. It's not gonna be um, smooth right now. That is okay. We are going to be adding another layer of epoxy after this. So that's okay if you see any bumps or anything on your tumbler. So let's go ahead and move on to this next step. For the next step of the tutorial, I will be adding the stencil around the tumbler. So what do you wanna do first is you want to measure around the tumbler and um, get the diameter around it. And what I do is I focus more on the bigger part of the tumbler up top than the smaller. I'd rather have more material than less. So it is 12 inches around the tumbler. So I'm, I know I'm going to have a 12 inch uh, stencil or 12 inch vinyl. To save more time, you can always measure your cup at the very beginning of your uh, tumbler process. And while you have your tumbler on its turner drying, the epoxy drying, you can go ahead and have that stencil uh, knocked out or create that stencil. stencil. So after your 24 hours is up, you can just go ahead and place that stencil right on your tumbler. I will be creating my template for my tumbler. The template I'll be creating is going to be the tree lines uh, template. I went ahead and I went to Google and I typed in Treeline SVG. You can put Trees SUV, Treeline Silhouette, uh, whatever you find easier. I then uh, right clicked my image and I saved picture as, and then I saved it to my documents or my, my photo album on my computer. I'm now going to go to Cricut Design Space and click upload. I'm going to upload the image, click browse right here in the middle and then I'm now going to search for the trees that I saved to my uh, desktop. And then I will upload that to my Cricut Design Space. This is already a SVG file, so there's only one color on here. It's just black, so there's one layer to this file. I'm going to select Complex, Continue. And like I said, this is already an SUV, SVG file, meaning uh, this is not a two layer file. The only one layer to this photo that I selected are the trees. If there were two layers to this, you would see this whited out and then I would just select and erase and I would just white out the background, making this file a one layer file. So I'm now going to continue and you can save over here to the right. You can put trees, tree line, just whenever you go to search in the, in the future. Um, it will pop up easier for you on Cricut Design Space. And then I'm gonna save that and then upload that photo to my uh, project. And then you will see it uh, come on the screen. And like I showed you earlier, I did measure my tumbler. It was about 12 inches around the tumbler or the diameter. So I'm going to stretch this out and you see this is about 5.25 inches. I want this to be 12 inches because I want the tumbler to be completely covered I don't want any blank spaces around the tumbler. I want the tree line to wrap all the way around. My apologies, I forgot to measure the top to the bottom. So the glitter, you see how I did not glitter 
uh, towards the bottom. I want the trees to kind of sit around here, so I'm just gonna measure quickly, and it's about three and a half inches, so I want the design to about three and a half, and it looks like it is 3.661, so this size is perfect for my tumbler. What I'll do next is make sure that my file is on cut type, the top left-hand corner, if you see my cursor, this is cut and not print. Um, I chose no fill, not print, and I just always keep it black, just uh, easier for me whenever I edit. Now I'm going to go to the top right-hand corner and select make it in green. And then you'll see your design here um, ready to be cut. Now, Cricut thinks that I have a smaller mat so if you have a larger mat, go ahead and use your larger mat. Uh, what I do, since this is hanging off just a little bit, I just put some tape on my vinyl, and you'll see that here soon, uh, just to keep this down on the non-sticky part. So I'm going to get my vinyl, and then we'll move on to the next step. Remember that your vinyl is going to be used as a template, as a stencil, so you will not leave this vinyl down. So the vinyl that I will be using and that you need to be using is 631 vinyl or temporary vinyl. Do not use 651 or permanent vinyl. If you use permanent vinyl, it's going to be a lot harder to rip up and you might even rip your epoxy. So make sure your vinyl says temporary, make sure it says 631, make sure it does not say permanent adhesive vinyl. I've placed my vinyl on my uh, Cricut mat, and if you see, I do have some hanging off. That's for so whenever um, the machine can cut it. If it does cut right through it and cuts through the vinyl, that is okay. I'm not too worried. I made this design a little bit bigger than my tumbler anyways, so don't worry if it does hang off. And if you notice these mats, they don't have the stickiness on the entire mat where it says standard grip, it's not sticky. Um, if you do have a design that's a little bigger, you can just go ahead and put a little piece of painter's tape down just to make that uh, grip grip on that mat so you don't have to uh, use your, your 24 inch mats. And I'm now going to cut my design. I have my tree line cut out. The vinyl did get a little uh, crinkly or wrinkly, but it's okay. It doesn't affect it at all, especially since this is a stencil. So if you see here, the vinyl is cut out. Now I'm going to do this a different way than what you're probably used to. I don't wanna necessarily get rid of the trees or throw the trees out because you never know what the next project may be. So I might be able to use these uh, vinyl trees in the future. I'm gonna be taking my Cricut picking tool or my weeding tool and just picking up the pieces of the trees, removing the silhouette, silhouette itself and keeping the stencil behind it. If you do rip the silhouette on accident, it's okay. Um, it doesn't mean you can't use the entire silhouette again. Just go ahead and cut that piece off and then you can maybe use the rest of the trees. So this should come up very, very easily. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I did use my iron-on setting for this design. I know this is vinyl, it's not iron-on, but I do use iron-on setting, especially when it comes to intricate designs or intricate cuts. Um, it just cuts very easily for 631 or temporary vinyl. So here is my vinyl that I ripped up. Here is the stencil that I have left over. I have my tumbler and I have my stencil. So I'm just going to wrap this around. It's not sticky yet. I just wanna make sure that I do have enough and it looks like I have plenty. So I'm wanting to wrap that around. Either way uh, is easier for you. You can either peel this up and then wrap it around or you can put transfer tape and then wrap it around and then peel up the transfer tape, whichever way you find easier. First going to trim the excess around. So I'm gonna trim the bottom and then I'm going to trim the sides just so I have less material to work with and it will be a lot easier when I go to wrap around this vinyl. If you've seen a lot of Northern Lights tumblers, you know or you might have seen that the tree stump is not shown. It kind of overlaps on the bottom or it kind of cuts off at the bottom. So what I'm going to do just to make this easier for me to handle the stencil and to complete the overall design, I'm going to cut the bottom of the tree line 
just so the stumps are kind of cut off. So that way we're not just seeing trees from the bottom. We're kind of getting that effect of um, just the trees and not so much, just the top of the trees and not so much the bottom. I'm also going to be peeling off this excess um, vinyl towards the bottom. It does look nice for the effect, but I just know it's going to get in the way whenever I go to spray paint. So I just want it to look as clean as possible up top. And I would like to not waste materials by not using uh, transfer tape, but honestly, I don't trust myself enough. So I'm, I am going to put transfer tape over this and I will be applying this with transfer tape to make it a little easier for me. I have my tumbler here and I have my vinyl design or stencil. And now I'm going to peel up the transfer tape and then we, we will be adding it to the tumbler. I will be honest with y'all, this is my least favorite part about the entire tumbler. Uh, I am not very good at this, so please bear with me. And then we will get through it together. So I'm going to place one end of the vinyl down on the tumbler and you can start this wherever you like so you can start at the very bottom or if you want to be more comfortable you can uh, if you want the trees to go a little higher you can start a uh, higher i like the trees being flush to the the bottom of the tumbler so i'm going to take take the design just towards the bottom but again this is your tumbler and you can create it whichever way you like so i have the vinyl down and then now I'm just going to roll it onto the tumbler and I'm just focusing on placing it down not necessarily without creases because this is a round surface and it is going to be a little harder to place and what I'm doing now is I always find it easier to kind of create slits in my transfer tape it's a little easier to place down whenever you are placing down your vinyl I want to do this uh, correctly, but I also want to get this on camera for y'all. So it is kind of hard to get the right angle. So I'm just kind of placing the tree line around the tumbler, trying to keep it straight, but that is a struggle. So what I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to cut this tree right in half or cut the trees that's together right in half and place this this way and kind of place this in um, sections just to make it easier for me. If this isn't easier for you, then go ahead and do your thing and make that tree line or lay, lay the entire tree line around the whole tumbler. I know some things are easier for other people, um, so I'm just gonna place it this way and it might be a little easier for me. So after I place this down, I'm going to place it down and then uh, squeegee with my a squeegee tool and then remove this transfer tape and then add another section of my vinyl. I have my first piece of vinyl on my tumbler and I'm going to kind of cut this tree right here because I don't want a line whenever I add the other piece and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I added that piece of tree or I cut that piece of tree and then I'm gonna cut this piece of tree as well just so I don't have that overlap in line so it doesn't look like a stencil. Now I can easily place this on my tumbler like so, and then you won't see that overlap of that stencil. And then you can go ahead and um, finish this out or like what I'm going to do to make it easier, I'm going to cut it another piece off.
I'm being very careful while I pull the transfer tape up, especially around the tree branch area. So make sure you are being very careful with that because if I rip up, I know with me being such heavy handed, if I rip up the tree line uh, quickly, it's gonna rip up the vinyl. So make sure you are very careful while doing that step. And then I'm going to do the same thing by just cutting a piece of this off. I'm gonna keep this just in case I need this again. I'm gonna keep this piece of vinyl. So I'm gonna cut at an angle just so it doesn't have that uh, look to it of it being a stencil. So it looks like that I did not account for um, cutting my template and placing it on piece by piece. Therefore, I had to actually cut another template off camera and I wanted to show you all this anyways. I've been doing tumblers for a couple years now and I still make little mistakes, but I just wanna let you know that there are fixes to most of the mistakes that you make. So I just went ahead and I uh, recut another design and then I'm just going to place it um, on the spot that needs the trees. Now that you have your vinyl on your tumbler, it's okay if, if it has wrinkles in it or anything. The most important part for this step is to make sure all of your tree branches are flattened down on your tumbler. Whenever you go to spray paint, you don't want spray paint getting underneath your tree branches. So make sure it's all flat. And then what you can do next is take your excess transfer tape or the transfer tape that you use to place down the vinyl. Go ahead and cover up the top of your tumbler. If you have to cover it in pieces, so do it. Or you can also use some excess vinyl that you have laying around. Whatever you have on hand, just to cover up the top. So whenever you go and spray paint, you won't have the spray paint uh, get on this top part of the tumbler. You want this top part of the tumbler to be completely uh, glittered and no spray paint on here. For my next step, I'm going to be spray painting the bottom of this tumbler with black spray paint. The black spray paint that I'm using today is Flat Black Primer by Rust-Oleum. It does not have to be this brand or this type, but I do recommend it being at least satin or matte flat finish. I do not recommend using gloss spray paint on this, only because whenever I go to epoxy this, um, after I spray paint it, sometimes gloss spray paint makes um, epoxy fisheye or spread, and I just want the epoxy to be applied to the tumbler as easiest as I can with little to no problems. I will be doing this step off camera, but please remember to make sure all of your tree leaves are down, placed stuck onto the tumbler. I just finished spray painting my tumbler. I'm going to let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. I did wanna mention something. If you see some of my vinyl was not stuck to my tumbler, that little, little piece there, you can see poking up right there. That is going to make a difference. That tree probably did not get spray paint the way, spray painted the way I wanted to. Spray paint most likely got underneath there, but what I'm probably gonna do is add a name to this tumbler, so I'll make sure to add the name right there if that does not look um, like a tree line. So I just wanted to show you that. So this is what not to do. Make sure your tumbler, your vinyl is stuck properly stuck very, very well to your tumbler. Spray paint is now dried and this is when I'm going to pull up the transfer tape and the vinyl. Since I'm not too worried about the, my vinyl ripping, I just let my vinyl rip and I'll just go back in with my weeding tool or my pick and just kind of pick out the excess vinyl that's left behind. 
I'm focusing more on just um, making sure uh, I did get a full covered um, bottom to my to my uh, scene at the bottom here. So I'm now going to pull up the area where my transfer tape was kind of not placed down and you can see the difference there. It doesn't look too noticeable, but um, you could see the overspray where it sprayed right here that should have been stuck. So it did come underneath or spray underneath that vinyl there. And now I'm just going to clean up the rest of the tumbler by just removing the vinyl that I did not move just now. And then you'll start seeing your tumbler really come together after this step. For the next step of the video is going to be to epoxy the tumbler. I have not sprayed this tumbler with any sealer. I have not spray painted it with a clear coat of spray paint. I'm going in right after spray painting, peeling the, uh, the vinyl after it dries, and then I'm going to go right into epoxy. Now, if you do want to add a decal to this tumbler, you can go ahead and add a cute quote to this. Add your decal and then go ahead and add this last coat of epoxy. It is up to you. I went ahead and I mixed my epoxy off camera. I am wearing my face mask to protect me from my epoxy fumes. So if I do sound funny, I do apologize. I have mixed a total amount of 40 milliliters of epoxy. I mix a total amount of 20 milliliters of part A and 20 milliliters of part B. I do want a lot more epoxy on this tumbler because I will be adding a thicker coat of epoxy. Like all my other videos, I'm now going to apply my epoxy no particular way. There's no rhyme or reason on how I do this or how you do this. You apply your epoxy whichever way is easiest for you. I know they make some silicone epoxy tools. You can go ahead and use that if your gloved finger uh, does not work for you. If you want to apply your epoxy up and down, go ahead and do so. Whichever way works. I'm making sure I'm applying a very, very even coat of epoxy and this coat is a lot thicker because this will be my final coat of epoxy. I've decided to not put a decal on this, but if you decide to put a quote on some or someone's name on this tumbler, it will not look bad at all. I've seen quotes and names added to these tumblers and they look absolutely beautiful. So don't forget to get the bottom of this tumbler and if you notice my flat spray paint it did pop whenever I put that epoxy on and did it stay dull. So that's what's great about epoxy. It really allows everything underneath it, mostly everything underneath it, to really pop and shine and come to life. Once I finish putting my epoxy on my tumbler, I'm going to allow my tumbler to turn for four to six hours. Once it has been turning on its turner for four to six hours, I'm then going to turn off my cup turner and allow my tumbler to air dry or air cure for another four to six hours, leaving my drying time or curing time total of 12 hours. Before I even ship this tumbler or sell it to a customer, I do prefer uh, having tumblers to be dried or cured for a minimum of 24 hours just to make sure that the tumbler is completely cured and there's no issues with possibly the tumbler being tacky or sticky. Don't forget to check out my description below for my help videos, including how to epoxy a tumbler correctly and how to clean up the rim or the top of your tumbler whenever you're finished designing it. That video really does help. I get a lot of questions asking how I clean up the inside of my tumbler or how I clean up the rim of my tumbler. So be sure to watch that video and it will help you tremendously. I'm just cleaning up this rim here and then once my rim is finished, I'm now going to allow my tumbler to start the curing or air drying process. After that, I'll clean up the rim, I'll clean up the inside, and this tumbler is ready to be sold or used. 